Hello, my name is Timothy Baird, and I am Managing Editor of the American Journal of Medicine. I'm here today with Dr. Joseph Alpert, our Editor-in-Chief, to talk about an article in this month's issue regarding cardiac arrest patients. Dr. Alpert? Yes, Timothy, this is a very interesting study. So, it's been now perhaps half a dozen years. People have reported, uh, allegedly, that there was benefit in it when you resuscitated a sudden death victim to cool their body down. And this is an idea that's been around for a long time. For example, uh, before there was the heart-lung bypass machine, children undergoing congenital heart disease uh, surgery would be literally frozen down because there was less injury, less demand uh, by the, the muscle cells, the brain cells, and so forth. Um, and there were initially reports that this was very beneficial, cooling people down for generally a day or even two days um, after they were resuscitated from cardiac arrest allegedly resulted in less injury to the brain and less injury to the heart and so forth. Um, so the current study is actually a randomized controlled study from Scandinavia, mostly Denmark, but also some from Norway, in which some patients underwent the cooling and some patients didn't, and then they compared the amount of injury to the heart uh, that occurred with the two techniques, so the standard technique versus the cooling down of the body technique. Dr. Albert, can you tell us a little bit about the implications of this article for clinical practitioners? And the results were pretty surprising. Instead of all these smaller anecdotal reports that there was benefit from the cooling, this trial showed no benefit and maybe even a little bit of harm to the heart. Um, now, how did they measure that? They measured that by measuring blood tests for markers that are released into the circulation when the heart is damaged, uh, troponin and uh, uh, CKMB. And both of these have been used in the, in the management of patients with heart attacks to see how big a heart attack the patient had. So you can compare the amount of rise of these um, biomarkers in the patients who got frozen to the patients who didn't. Um, and one would have expected much less injury to the heart with the cooling. And unfortunately, there was no difference in, in, in the troponin values, and actually it was worse with the CKMB. So this means we have to rethink the whole thing about cooling patients who've had a cardiac arrest. So it has huge clinical implications. Now clearly this is just the first study that's doing this, but what it calls for then is a larger study to again re-examine this whole question to make sure we're not hurting people when we think we're helping them. So I hope everybody will read this article. It's a very interesting article, very uh, controversial because it's showing the opposite of what we had thought was the case. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it and, and uh, discuss it with your colleagues. Thanks so much for tuning in to uh, the American Journal of Medicine. Um, we hope you'll continue to come to our blog and our website and, or see us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we have lots of ways to communicate with you.